Hi. I'm here to talk about the 1996 film No One Would Tell that aired on NBC. And it's 2018 remake that aired on Lifetime. Now, why remake something that was just beautiful and haunting? My only explanation for that was they were just trying to get a new generation of people more aware of domestic violence. I mean, you could easily show them the original film, but... Instead of doing that, they says, "Why don't let's just do it? Let's just do our own retelling of it." So that's my own explanation. The nineteen ninety six film starred Fred Savage and Candace Cameron. Now the film is based on a tragedy that that Amy Carnival, a sweet outgoing student, was in a relationship with a. With uh, Jamie Fuller, captain of the wrestling team, and they started out good, but then he got abusive and possessive, and when she tried to break it off with her, he killed her. And he is sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Well, I hear he's up for parole, but truth is, I hope he doesn't get it, because, look... He was very cocky and unremorseful during the trial. And um, and you made your choice to take a life. And they had a right to take their life, your life away from you by putting you in prison for the rest of your life. I mean, you made that choice. You could have easily walked away, but you didn't. You murdered this innocent girl. And you deserve to spend the rest of your life in prison. And my heart goes out to Amy Carnival and her family. Okay. Now the 1996 film... I mean, Candace... The names have been changed, but the story's basically the same. Uh... Candace Cameron plays Stacy Collins, a friendly but sh- very shy high schooler. She has this friend named, played by Heather McComb, and um, and they like boys just as the next, just as the next group of females. But they're, but the truth is they're very. Uh, they don't. Well, Stacy doesn't believe a boy would ever be interested in her because. But actually, is actually surprised when the captain of the wrestling team, uh, Bob Tennyson, Bobby Tennyson, sorry, played by Fred Savage, um, is interested in her, and the relationship starts out good at first, and then he gets, then as it goes on, he gets jealous and possessive, and the and it won't long before it leads up to abuse, till till slaps and all that stuff. <laughs> Now, if I'm not, there may be a spoiler alert, but the beginning's pretty much its own spoiler alert because it it lets you know that this is not going to end well. <laughs> this is not going to have have a happy ending to it. And I like the way movies, I like the way the movie does that. It just it kind of shows that this is not going to have a happy ending for poor Stacy. No, but it leads up to that and. Um, she has a mom. She's a she. Her mom, played by Michelle Phillips, is divorced and is in a her own abusive relationship, more like verbally instead of physical. But <laughs> and I gotta say about Fred Savage's performance, he really surprised me. I mean, he was trying his best to play up against that wholesome image known uh, from the Wonder Years, and he just wanted to show he could play out of his own comfort zone, and he does it pretty well, I gotta say that. I mean, he's just so unhinging. <laughs> he's like a bubble that throughout throughout the film just slowly blows, slowly goes, and then and then he just towards, and then when he just finally pops, that's what he's, that's what he, how he plays it, is like a bubble just slowly and finally bursts. And Candace Cameron was good too. I mean, I mean, it's not a comfortable film to watch. You hate watching this 
this poor nice girl get roughed up on. Yeah, I don't know if anybody wants to see Kevin Arnold rough up DJ Tanner. <laughs> but I gotta say, both both actors play their performances very well. Heather McComb as the friend is, as Stacy's friend is good, and and Michelle Phillips as her mother, good too. And not to let's not, let's not forget Gregory Allen Williams is the cop who is in. Okay, I'm gonna get to this part. Maybe a little. I mean, the first part is about her in a real domestic relationship, but the second part is more like uh, her disappearance, and it becomes an invested a mystery of what, what happened to her. Although the beginning pretty much tells you what did happen to her, that this is not going to end well. But and uh, whew. and the film was good; it was beautiful and haunting. And I I love Sally Jesse Raphael's the speech during the trial scene. And I just love Fred Savage's performance during that scene. He doesn't say a word. He just gives this really motionless face during the whole trial. <laughs> and then when he finally gets sentenced to life imprisonment, he looks generally surprised because he thought because of his age. Um, he, I guess he assumed because of his age, he wouldn't get a, a sentence like that. But but the judge showed him no mercy, not because he was not because he was real young. It's just it's just. You still killed this girl. And I love the speech Sally Jesse Raphael as the judge gives um, at the end where it says, Oh, yo, how many of y'all been hit, shoved by your girlfriend and all, boyfriend and all that stuff? And, um, well, you all watched this happen to poor Stacy and you did nothing. You have a responsibility to, to the people you care about. I don't know if the judge in. At that, that Bobby, at, sorry, Jimmy Fuller's trial said a said a speech like that, but maybe the judge did, and they're right. I mean, um, I mean, if they uh, if somebody did speak up, maybe maybe poor Amy would have st still been alive. Maybe this whole thing could have been prevented if um, if someone spoke up. But but I think people were admired Jamie, and they were pretty much a same time, they were afraid of him. Kind of similar to what was happening in the movie. From what I heard, what, I, what, I, what I've listened to, um, the film No One Would Tell, well, the 1996 version, kind of plays it very true on how he killed her and all, and it's... And, uh, and all that, I mean... It's very... It's very sad and haunting when you watch the movie. And it's a, uh, I mean, it's a, it's it's a real, it's still a good film, very sad, still a good film. Now let's talk about the 2018 remake, or I don't know if somebody would say it's, wouldn't say it's really a remake, it's a retelling. And this one, um, Martreya Scarweiner, Weiner, I think her name is, plays Sarah Collins, not Stacy, and Shannon Doherty, who sadly passed away last week at the age of 53 plays her mother now what I like about this film the mother here plays a bigger role I mean Michelle Phillips as the mother in, in No One Would Tell in the original was okay but she was just kind of there when the film needed her to be and then she just kind of wasn't that's the thing she was just there when it needed for her to be and then it wasn't but in this one she does play a, a bigger role because it's, of course, it's Shannon Doherty. Shannon Doherty is not going to just play a, not just going to play a person who's just kind of there and kind of not. But, and then Callan Potter plays Rob Tennyson, not Bobby. Uh, I mean, his anger towards Sarah is very different. I mean, he's not really a bubble. He's more like, plays it more like a multiple personality disorder he's like it's like he could be sweet and friendly but then when something tees him off it's like his this anger is another personality it's how he plays it like he it's not really um i, I say he plays it pretty well in some scenes i feel he overdoes it with the anger moments and chanel 
Peslio, Peslo, also, sorry, he's also good as Nikki, her friend, who is concerned when, when she starts noticing something's not right with Rob. And I like uh, Matreya's performance as uh, as Sarah. I mean, it's very well. It's not similar in many ways to Karen's Cameron. She's more she's more strong headed. I mean, um, I mean, she's pretty much aware that something's not right with Bobby. But she's one of those things she could change him and make him into a better person. But when she realizes she can't, she breaks it off with him and. Uh, She realizes she kind of dug herself into this big hole and wants to, and doesn't want to stay in this hole. She makes it very clear. And the way, and I also like the, and there's no real detective. Well, there is a detective in this film, but he doesn't play a big role like he did in the original. I mean, in this one, it's kind of the mother and the friend who are basically the detectives. They solve the crime very well. They solve the crime here, and um, they kind of put they kind of end up putting two and two together. And uh, and the way I mean, it's pretty clear that in, if if you, if you haven't seen the original, it's spoiler. Alert, it's pretty clear that Rob killed uh, Sarah, but the way he kills her is very different from the way he killed her in in the original. I mean, in the original, he intended to kill her, and like, if I can't have her, no one will. It's like, but in this one, it's like, uh, he's just, he does choke her, but it was more, he plays it more like accidental. I mean, it's like, he didn't mean to kill her. He just wanted her to love him, and he didn't mean to, and he just covered up his crime, and, and I really like the speech that Shannon Doherty gives in the courtroom scene. That um, that she kind of it's the way it's, it's, it was interesting the way she says, "Oh, uh, uh, oh, uh, you're blaming her because uh, she didn't leave him, or you're blaming Nikki because she didn't say anything." Stop doing that. Blame. Blame him, not her. And you could notice there's a silence in the courtroom after she says that, because no argument there. And Mira Silvino makes an appearance as the judge. She does give a speech, but similar, but very different from the way Sally Jesse Raphael gives the speech. And and I thought it was well deserved. And and I like the ending in this version. I mean. That the friend comes in and it consoles the mother and show consoles her mother and um, Sarah's mother. I mean, and shows you that she's going to be there for her in times of need and just not a real not a real happy ending, not a totally sad ending, but hopeful in many ways that that she's gonna that her friend's gonna help her mother get through this. And I gotta say, let me tell you something. About, I forgot to mention about. Sarah's death scene very different from I told you I told you how different it was but I mean it's okay but it doesn't have the same moment like that like when you're watching the original no one would tell and you watch when he kills Stacy and what he does to her body it's just a feeling you know <laughs> and all that and but I hope and both films were good, I gotta say, and it's both were very sad and and um, it's really sad that Amy Carnival, who was bright and a hopeful student, um, lost her life to this psychotic madman of a teen. Oh, one more thing I gotta point about the about the diff how the the original how this remake differs from the original they don't really give an explanation for Bobby's anger Robbie's anger I mean I mean in the original it sort of gives an explanation for 
why Bobby's the way he is, but in this one it really doesn't. I mean, maybe he doesn't feel it was necessary because abuse is abuse. He doesn't really need an explanation. But I hope these films were a big life lesson for people who go through domestic violence. I mean, I mean, we all should, if we witness this, we should stand up for the victim. I mean, it's a... Uh, or something bad probably will happen. Will definitely probably will happen if if we don't stand up and say something. I mean, poor Amy Carnival was the result of that. Okay. Thanks for listening.